So she takes me in and I tell you, she starts knocking my boots. I thought it was a little forward, but to be honest, there's a bit of mud on them, so needed to be done. How's it going, eh? Welcome to ACAST. This is good old Canadian boys. Yeah. Talking about games and stuff like that. We're uh, shooting it from the garage today, Kev. Yeah, that's From the, the original <laughs> intent of Namecast, which became <laughs> ACAST, was to be a garage show. Yes. So there's, here we are. It's a very, very hilariously sounding. Uh, name cast, which I think has been deleted at this point, actually. No, it's up. It's up? Oh, it's beautiful. up. The first, the first uh, episode, we called it Pilot. Yeah, so, so yeah, you can go back there, you can listen to uh, how much our audio quality has changed. Yeah, we were And this is really even not the best Not we the best. Do. Yeah, we didn't even do face cam back then. But, yeah. It was recorded on a, uh, like a Mac laptop with a Yeti blue mic. And um, we were playing a game, so there was click clack of the controller. But the game we ended up syncing up afterwards was a totally different game because we didn't capture yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, that it was, wasn't an issue. Yeah, it was the good old days. Yeah, was... back when back when CGM was three. He shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got the bikes in the background. We got the the hockey sticks and everything. Like that. So Kevin, we got some housekeeping to take out here. Housekeeping. What games you been playing? Um, nothing. Pretty much nothing. I hopped into like World of Warcraft for a little bit, but didn't do much of anything destructive there. And uh, I guess I kind of been playing a tiny bit of Pokemon Go, but I don't know. It's a mobile game, so it kind of barely feels like you're playing a game. Yeah. And Pokemon Go definitely doesn't improve on that compared to other mobile games either. So yeah, it's just kind of. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but it's funny that actually got brought up at work today. People asking, you know, hey, what's everybody playing? Um, I think one person of the chat of like 12 answered. Okay. So they so were playing no WoW. <laughs> so it's like, nope, nobody's in a game playing mood right now. I, I don't wow. know if like you guys on the other side of the camera like have the same experience, but yeah. It's just, Is it like the pre-holiday blues? Like, what are we talking here? I think it's, well, it's, it's summer and it's beautiful and this doesn't apply to Australian people, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyone's Southern Hemisphere, I guess, if you want to be inclusive, but uh, it's. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's not the season. It's not the season. Yeah. I've, I've kind of been in the same boat. Like, I picked up Uncharted again, because I never actually finished Uncharted 4. Yeah. So I've been playing through that a bit, and like, I just, I don't know, man. I'm not in a gamey mood. Like, I'm doing, I'm doing a course in uh, Unity, so I'm yeah. plugging through that. How's it going for you? Uh, it's going. It's going. It's good. I've kind of hit, like, a, a part of a slog. Where, like, I'm making this brick game, and I hate brick games. And, like, it's just... Brick breaker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, And it's just so minute details. And, like, I don't know. Maybe they didn't think this section of the course out. But, like, literally we spent 40 minutes designing the perfect-looking brick. Why? Fucking shoot me. It, like, how it's is a that rectangle. a big deal? Exactly. Like, the textures had to be just right in the way... And, I'm like, I don't care. Like, I understand that you're trying to teach this, but let's do that on something more interesting than a fucking brick. Yeah. Like, who <laughs> cares? Who really cares? No one gives a shit. But That's anyway, funny. yeah. So it's, I'm going through it. I haven't been in much of a, much of an anything mood, but that's for, for a topic further down in the, in the ACAST thing. So you said you had something gamesy to talk about. What you got? Um, No Man's Sky has been interesting, and given that, so right now, we're talking on Monday, this will come up on Wednesday, so we're, we're in the pre-launch um, era of information here, but, um, yeah, there's been some interesting information coming out. I think one of the big things is actually the, uh, they gave the uh, patch notes for the uh, day one patch, mm -hmm. um, and from the sounds of things, the game without the day one patch is kind of a lot shittier than the game with the day one patch. Oh, really? Yeah. So, it's... I understand it. I feel like, I don't know, maybe they're just trying not to push back more than they did, but right. maybe they should have. Because there's a lot of features in there. Apparently, they're still working... Excuse me, they're still working on the uh, PC version. Um, which they delayed from a Tuesday launch to Friday. Oh, I was gonna download tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. You download it on your PS4. I'd much rather play it on PC. Yeah, that's very fair. Um, 
So yeah, they're, they're still working on that and trying to get in as much as they can, which is crazy because they have to launch it on Friday. They shouldn't be doing anything new. But wow, that's yeah. amazing. I wonder how that happened. Uh, honestly, I think they just had you know very big plans for it. It's it's actually surprising. Give, how much is in the game right now is incredibly surprising. Seems like it's a very big game with a lot of systems and stuff going on. And especially those kind of like space sim type games, they, they take a while to make. Like It's just kind of like a difficult... Especially with like a 14 person team. Yeah, and they have a small team. It's like a huge part of it too. And I don't know, it seems like... The game seems really, really fun after reading those day one patch notes. Before that I was a little more skeptical mm. about you know whether there would be enough to do if it get too boring too quickly. But it seems like... You know, there's at least enough systems in there that I believe that they'll add more stuff for me to do before I ever get bored of the game. Yeah. So yeah, that should be good. I'm actually, uh, yeah, as, as we get closer and closer to launch, like, I'm, I'm getting more down on that game. I think I'm, I think I'm gonna play it. Like, I, I'm probably gonna buy it. Maybe PS4 per day. The only reason why I said I'd rather play it on, P on uh, PC is just because, I don't know, I'd just rather play every game on PC at this point. Not because it's a Master Race, but it's just... Believe it or not, and I never thought I'd say this, it's just so much simpler. Yeah. It's so much easier. Like, I can just have Facebook and Spotify open. And sure, there's Spotify on PS4, but it's it's a whole rigmarole. I always have my PC on. Two there's monitors. no There's two monitors. There's no if Sandra or buts about it. Like, I can just have one monitor open, and then the other monitor, I'm listening to a podcast. Yeah. Or in the other one, I can be looking up something that I'm stuck in, or whatever. And it's just, it's so much easier really is. Yeah. It's, I I never thought I'd say that <laughs> like ever. Yeah, people say that about a console like the simplicity of console, you know. Well, you just plug it in. There is a much bigger setup time for uh, uh, playing PC games, but I, I think if you're actually just talking about opening up a game and playing it, PC is by far easier. That's not necessarily true because I love the Batman games. Can't play them on PC. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and they always for some reason, it always goes on sale on Steam, yet, like, there's no sense in getting Arkham Knight or anything like that, unless you have the specific Pretty processors brilliant. that work perfectly for it, but if you're down the AMD path, then fuck you, apparently. Uh, I think Arkham City works fine. Just, just for your information. Uh, the Oh, Arkham City. Yeah, I played the crap at Arkham City already. I beat, uh, okay. beat that one a ton of times. <laughs> I want to play Arkham Knight. I want to play Arkham Origins. Yeah. I, I bought Arkham Origins. Maybe I, maybe I said this on a name cast, but I bought Arkham Origins and I played it and it was it was running beautifully. Like my machine definitely outspecs uh, it's recommended, so yeah. it, it should be running fine. And uh, then I got to the Killer Croc fight and shit got weird. He went invisible. <laughs> Frames just started dropping like crazy. The game just like kind of crashed. I had to do a hard reset. Yeah. And I, I remember texting you, and I was like, if this is what PC gaming is, I made a massive mistake. Because, <laughs> like, I didn't spend a crazy amount, but, like, a thousand in Canadian money, so whatever that boils down to. But, you know, a decent amount of money on this PC, and I was like, oh, man, this, I've made a massive error. <laughs> Luckily, it's just bad porting, and I was able to get my money back yeah. uh, from Steam, but, oh, that was a bad experience. Those are the newest notoriously worst games and it's kind of funny that you kind of went to them first for your PC experience I love Batman <laughs> I love Batman so like and I love the Batman games so yeah that, that's absolutely what I go for speaking of Batman yeah you saw a movie with the bats in them a little bit of the bats yeah yep. uh, Suicide Squad I'm not even gonna bother it's uh <laughs> it's it's a short lesson on why you don't redo a story last minute and also why you, you don't let a trailer company edit half the movie yeah anyways yeah yeah i heard the pacing was like whoa just we and it's just weird it's 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 correct when people say it. it's like a hour and 40 minute trailer yeah it's, it's, it's how the pacing goes it's just it flows constantly and, you know, that's that's nice for a two-minute trailer. You know, think about you'd stare at a river for maybe a couple minutes, and you'd be cool. It's a good flow. You don't want to do that for an hour and 40 minutes. And that's something that kind of I was talking to you about with uh, Craig Benzine's project. If you don't know him, he's a wheezy waiter. He, yeah. uh, he does some fantastic vlogs. Personally, I think 
he's dipped. I really think he was hitting his stride when he was doing the, the daily vlog type vlog. And I yeah. loved that, that Casey, Casey Nesad style that had his weirdness on it. But he's, he's back to the classic wheezy and I don't like it, but it's, it's whatever. I've actually contemplated uh, unsubbing. I love oh. his content. I know I have, I just, I really don't it's like that worse. style of content. Um, I've never disliked one of them, but I never like one of those kind of videos. Um, but anyway, he made a, uh, like a series. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's called Algorithm. Yep. Emphasis on the rhythm. So it's like algorithm. Yeah. But also the algorithm part. It's kind of a, there's a word for that. It's a up of two words together. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and the way it was cut together, like it, it flowed like a trailer. Like it just made, and maybe, maybe uh, Suicide Squad isn't like this, but like it felt like it made too many leaps in logic or something. It's like, it would make sense if you were reading it on a comic page, but watching it, it doesn't make sense. Like some, something can happen once and then they'll bring it up 20 seconds later and they'll be like, oh, you always do this. But it's not really ingrained in the viewer's mind that they always do this. They were just introduced to this concept. They haven't had time to ruminate on it and really let that build into their brain if it's brought up again 20 seconds later. Sure, that would work in a trailer, but it doesn't work in a series or a movie. And I feel yeah. like this had a similar issue. Yeah, there was probably too much in the movie, so they kind of just all packed it together. Massive and, ensemble cast, too. Yeah, right? and it's, it's kind of funny how they do that. They just, like, outright pretty much admitted to it, and everybody had, like, an intro kind of video that they went through as soon as the character yeah. was introduced. And yeah. I, I don't think they had much other choice. I actually think it's probably the best way to do that kind of ensemble cast out of nowhere is where nobody's going to know three quarters of the characters or more. Now, I've been told Will Smith kind of carried it. Yeah, Will Smith was, was quite good. Uh, Margot Robbie was quite good, although it's definitely debates on her interpretation of Harley Quinn. Uh, I heard my favorite one, which I haven't seen the movie, but it, uh, it, the guy was like, basically she was playing like a porn star who was trying to play Harley Quinn. Like it was just way over sexualization and like it was kind of weird. It was, if you just want to see Margot Robbie's butt, like... That movie is pretty much half just her butt. There's so okay, many walkways. Well, I'm gonna scenes. go get my ticket. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so many scenes of just them all walking away. It's like a lot why? of butt shots. A lot of butt shots. Hey, man, girl's got a good butt. The bottom left third is exactly where they put it every time too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's really funny actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot of butt shots, huh? Yeah. So now my, my question is, and it's just kind of a joke question, but what do you think is going to happen first? Are we going to get a good DCU movie? So DC cinematic universe, mm -hmm. or are we going to get a bad Marvel movie? Like critically panned as bad. Sure. They're not all <laughs> gems so far, but like realistically, all those movies critically done very well. Yeah. Um... And in the box office, all done very well. I think we'll get a good DC Universe movie first. I'm my money is on Batman, the standalone Batman flick. Yeah, it potentially could be. Yeah, we'll see where they go with that. Honestly, I think it's just that like, you know, DC is basically just like machine gunning a whole bunch of different directors at different movies. Mm. Eventually, one is gonna strike true, and a good movie will come through. And I, I don't know. David Iyer is a good director. He is a good director. Um, I'm trying to think of some works that he's made. Uh, I know I've seen his movies, and I can't think of anything. I left my I'm phone. Terrible with names. So. Yeah, but I, I, it's gonna drive me crazy. Anyway, I, I know he's he's a good director. He's not a bad director. Yeah. But um, I'll be interested to see the direction that Ben Affleck takes with the solo Batman movie. Yeah, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised with how he acted Batman. Um, I don't know. If I wasn't very happy with uh, the super violent Batman that was in Batman vs. Superman. I thought he was a good Batman in that. I, I like it. It was just, it was kind of against Batman's character, a lot of it. There was a few weird things. That it's not, Batman though. Would. Batman is killed. That's, that's a thing. Yes, but they're putting it in, like, that just immediately. And normally it's, like, a really big point about Batman's character. Like, once he starts killing, like, that's a huge turning point. Yeah, but... And, you know, just... Ignoring all that, it's weird. 
I think you're missing a key aspect though, Kev. Mm -hmm. This is an older and grizzled Batman. I mean, this is not young Batman starting off. Okay, how do in I the, know that? In the Bat, because it says that. He says, I've been out of the game for so long. Like he's like, this is all established and it. Like he's an, he's an older Batman. Can I pull the exact same point that you made against algorithm? He says that once and he's walking in a cave looking at his old stuff and that's it. That yeah, but, but that's been set up. Like he's a, he's a <laughs> different kind of, but that's a character thing with him. He's an, he's an older Batman. He's been at this for so long. And they he also, also they also <laughs> they also set it up with the branding, you know, the, the literal branding that he's doing on people, so that they get ripped apart in prison. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, that part. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was that bad. It doesn't like it's it's obvious that he's a different kind of Batman. I mean, they absolutely set that up, and and they're allowed to make their own type of Batman. I mean. I, I kind of get pissed off when people are like, well, it didn't follow the source material. Well, what fucking source material are you <laughs> yeah. talking about? Because there's been like 80 years of comics of this shit. So don't pull that, didn't pull the source material on me bullshit. It didn't pull it from a specific strand that you enjoyed. Yeah. It was like a mashup of like a lot of different ideas from different comics and yeah. stuff. And, yeah. I don't know, I just didn't really enjoy the Batman. It didn't feel Batman-y to me. It didn't... Well, I mean, for right now, for our generation, Christian Bale's Batman. That's like, yeah, that's, that's our generation. It's true. Batman. And I am also willing to accept a darker Batman, but you know, if you want an example of it actually being set up well, and then it's the Dark Knight Returns animated movie in the comics, that sets up a darker Batman and how he gets to a darker place. Uh, Killing Joke also does a good job of that. This was just kind of, it felt unestablished mm. to me and without cause. Anyway. I'll be interested to see if we get more of that. Uh, I feel like we'll get more in-depth with the Batman character that the DCCU is trying to set up um, with the standalone Batman movie. Yeah, hopefully. And, I mean, the trailer from uh, Justice League was good, but I'm not falling for that shit again. Because <laughs> the first trailer for Suicide Squad was amazing. That, uh, oh man, that trailer that came out of, uh, of San Diego Comic-Con from Hall H, holy crap, that trailer was unreal. I loved it. And then the, uh, I think it was the second trailer for Man of Steel. Oh my gosh, blue, uh, um, uh, Batman v Superman. Blew my mind. I was like, yeah. this trailer is unreal. And both movies, I, I, I probably won't even see so this guy, but like, Batman v Superman kind of sucked. Best part was Batman. Apparently significantly better with the extra 30 minutes. Yeah, oh, speaking of significantly better with more time, apparently a lot of Joker footage was actually shot. Oh, like a lot, a lot. And cut? Oh yeah, a shit and ton trips. cut. And like Jared Leto's like, yeah, yeah, they could probably make a movie out of all the scenes I shot. Like, <laughs> so funny. he's, yeah, he was like, I put so much into that character um, just to give them a lot to work with. And I'm interested to see the, the, the pieces that they picked. It sounds like he's like being very nice about being pissed off, being like, what yeah. the fuck? Like you yeah. really undersold this character and I put a lot of work into this and you just like, <coughs> you fucked up. <coughs> Sorry, go. Oh, Jesus, I'm dying. <coughs> you good? No. No, it's it's not bam. Good. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Jerry Leto's Batman was or Joker. Sorry. It was it was it was a weird weird part of the movie. Uh, you didn't like it, eh? I think I feel like there's a lot of extra footage that I kind of set up why the Joker is that way. A little weird part of it is they also did the relationship with uh, uh, Harley Quinn differently, which is kind of against Harley Quinn's whole character. <clears throat> it makes Joker somewhat, I don't know, relatable? Which is weird. Okay. Don't do that. Don't make the Joker relatable? Nah. I guess so. I mean, in, I assume, our both our favorite interpretation of the Joker is probably Ledger. Yeah. 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 And, like, he was definitely not related. He was a psychopath. But I really like Matt Pat's video, and he was talking about the three different Jokers. Yeah. And um, have you seen his video? Yeah. Super, super clever, because the guy who uh, did that comic about the three different Jokers is the guy who's now running the DCCU. Yeah. So they, they could be going down that path, because that one is the, the psycho Joker, which is uh, 
Modern Joker, right? This Joker is different. No, 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 no. This Joker is different, and Matt Pat touches on that. Yeah. But uh, the Psycho Joker was the uh, the Nolan movies. Yeah. And then the uh, the Goofy Joker was like the Silver Age Joker, so that'd be from the Adam West. Yeah. And then the Golden Age would be in like the Burton movie. Yeah, kind of the uh, mastermind Joker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where he, he kills and he's he's kind of fucked up. And then you you have the psychopath that Ledger played so fantastically. So, um, I'm interested to know like, is this actually a Joker? Or is this like, because I thought it'd be cool, and I a lot of other people thought it'd be cool if it was actually like Jason Todd. It's not. Oh man, I thought the Joker tortured him, and he was originally Robin, and then he became the Joker. He became the Red Hood, which is interesting, because... Wait, wait, what? Robin's in this? No, not in this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, under the Red Hood comic. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, no, I, I think it was Jason Todd, yeah, that became the Red Hood. Yeah. And a lot of Joker's backgrounds have actually been being the Red Hood. Um, that's how he originally started and uh, then became the Joker after being the Red Hood. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of interesting, that interplay there. But yeah, this is very solidly, if we're talking about those three Jokers, this is very solidly a fourth Joker, who is kind of different from the other three. Yeah, yeah. So what's, what's he like? He's more grounded, more emotional. Um, seems more like a kind of a... Mafia slash group manipulator and kind of more about wealth. So, so money seems to be his motivation? Seems to be a little bit. Hmm. Um, so kind of like Silver Age. Yeah, a little bit, but still like darker, grittier. Right. Yeah. It's kind of weird, like gangster. And this, it's, it's, it's odd, it's new. I would like to see more footage to like, yeah, kind of figure out why that character exists because. Really, he could have easily not been in Suicide Squad as he was. And I think an unfortunate part is the fact that the uh, the trailers seem to set it up as though he was going to be the villain. I thought that was going to be the case. But spoilers to the movie, because I've heard a little bit about it. Like, a Ch Enchantress is the villain or something. Yeah. And then, like, there's, like, poop monsters that she makes that fights them. They're, like, blob <laughs> people, and it's really dumb. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It was she was kind of cool, but they set her up to be like, okay, this is why she's a threat, and then they didn't take it any further. And yeah, it was like, yeah, it's just it was it was way too weird. I can't get into it. We're going on a long long tangent, but yeah, it's basically just it wasn't a full full villain as a character, which I think people expect nowadays. Absolutely, it's like a full kind of deep complex villain. I mean, and see something that Greg Miller brought up was uh, the fact that, so Flash is more established in this film, right? Tiny bit more, yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. Why would he not help when this is going on? Would there be any reason why, there's no reason why he wouldn't. I don't think he was in that city, I guess, which is probably what they're gonna go with. Something's going on over here, boo! <laughs> like, he's the Flash, he can be in there and like, boo! 20 seconds tops. I don't think he's really I think at this point in the DC Universe timeline He's not really graduated to being much more than a crime fighter He's always a crime fighter. What are you talking about? I mean like this is like kind of like a national disaster type thing. Oh, he hasn't graduated to doing big things yet. I got what you're saying. Yeah. So he's he's like He's helping women with purses and things like that. He's not he's, he's not off to take out the not big a bad superhero. Yeah, because yeah, he's he's younger in this, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's quite a bit younger. A young Barry Allen. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. It's interesting stuff. Yeah. Do you got anything else, Kev? Um, no. Not really. It's, it's more talking about Suicide Squad than I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, we, we <laughs> talked about it a lot. It's, uh... It's interesting. I probably don't even have to see the movie. I feel like I've, I've seen it. Yeah, you probably know most of it. If you want to see some really bad cuts... Yeah. And lines, then yeah, you can go see it for a laugh, but that's about it. I'll be interested to see what a director's cut will be like. Um, yeah, it could be interesting. If there's a lot of extra footage, it could be better. Could be like a I imagine they movie. would probably undo 
the entire last third of the movie because I think that's the third act was awful eh? yeah I think that's what kind of got reworked um, and then maybe it'll be more in line with the direction the first trailer went yeah the first trailer cool as shit yeah loved it loved it but uh, how was Villa Davis as Amanda Waller was, was she any good or did she get not get much screen time who was that uh, Amanda Waller Black woman? The black woman. Oh, the uh, like CIA boss or whatever. Yeah. Um, she was actually quite good. I think she's actually going to be kind of more of a permanent character in the DC universe. So that's mm. Interesting. We'll see. See kind of how, how the user, whether it'll be kind of like a Nick Fury type way. Right, right. Yeah, I think she's going to be more of a bad guy though in the end. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She kind of has that. They definitely made her very uh, easily hateable, so... Interesting, interesting. I'm debating if I want to get into this next topic or if I just want to talk about superheroes. I don't know. What do you think? Let's go with the next topic. Okay, okay. So we're going, we're taking a nosedive, Kev. We're taking a nosedive. So, allow me to sit. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? So, uh, man, I had some topics to bring up and like, I just... They don't even feel like they're important or anything. It's like I don't, I don't really care, and that's that's an underlying fact right now. Um, yeah, so you may not be able to like see it in videos much or anything, but like, I'm like I haven't told you this much, like a little bit, like we're drunk, but I was like, why not have this conversation while filming and while like uh, yeah, while sober? Um, it's only like half a beer, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like super depressed, um, and it sucks a lot. And like, there's there's definitely like good moments. And I think I'm good at like faking it um, by uh, I don't know, just, just like the, the little things, like the the girl I have a crush on at work or whatever, mm-hmm. and like just the, the little bullshit. But like, it doesn't it doesn't go away. And like, there's always that voice. Like we were drinking the other night. And uh, I said something. I'm not sure if you caught it. You kind of laughed awkwardly. But, I mean, it was still, it was like, do you remember what I'm talking about? Not specifically, no. Yeah, so you're like believing your own biases. Something like that? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, believing your own biases. Yeah, that's what you said about uh, Steve Jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could confidently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'd yeah. go with them then. Yeah, confidently with your own biases. And I, I said something... Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And anyway, so it was, it was whatever. But, like, it sucks. And uh, I don't know. I just I find it interesting. I feel I have to talk about it in some type of video format. This is a talking format. It is a talking format. It is a talking format. And, uh, yeah, man. Have you ever, like, dealt with that much before? Like, you said seasonally to me once. Yeah. Um, but, like, what's that like? So... Mine has gone has been incredibly weird. So it's not really seasonal depression because seasonal pr- depression is usually like associated with like winter vitamin D deficiencies. Uh, you get depressed and your body just kind of gets stuck in that until you get a huge vitamin D supplement from spring and summer and stuff. Um, that's not really what it is for me. It's kind of more periodic depression. Um, so basically what that means for me is uh, about... September through to midway January, um, I'm usually depressed. Mm. Um, I think it's, I think it's kind of a taught thing for me. It's kind of, I have a lot of expectations for myself around the time of the year. And I think that's because of like school and stuff, you know, school would always start in September. Um, so I think I would, you know, kind of build up a lot of expectations for myself around then and then just kind of filled with dread. Mm. It's almost what it is, because, like, I know I can't do all these things, and it makes me kind of way too introspective on just kind of where, where I'm at in life and, like, the relationships I have in my life and stuff like that. So it, you know, tends to just lead to depression, and, you know, it's something that's next to impossible to kind of dig yourself out of. I don't think I've ever felt like I've actually done actions that have made myself not depressed. Mm. Um other than just kind of like waiting it out and you know that part kind of sucks but it's also kind of good and you know there's a little 
bit there, a um, little bit of reasoning to that, because, like, if you do wait out, like, kind of those down feelings, then they do actually kind of just get a, they become noise, and then it's kind of the nicer things that kind of start peaking, but, oh my god, does that process take a while, and, uh, yeah, I've had, I've had different variations to my levels of depression, and, uh, one thing that I find is actually quite interesting is um, I think it's actually um, genetic, I guess, or inherited. Um, I believe, well, I, I know my dad definitely has suffered it to some extent. I believe my grandfather has as well. Um, it's kind of interesting looking at it that way. It's kind of just like something I'm genetically predisposed to. And, Honestly, I don't think that helps me deal with it when it does come around, um, because, I don't know, it sucks to feel kind of out of control during that time, at least I find, because, you know, a lot of my depression definitely manifests itself, itself mainly in anxiety, um, so feeling out of control of something definitely doesn't help anxiety mm -hmm. at all. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, uh... I've been on about eight months now. Um, and I think I talked to you about it for the first time probably like, I don't know, about a month ago. Yeah. Um, and like, it's it's not the, the breakup or anything like that. Like that's honestly, that's, that's, that's the least of my worries. I'm way better off. But uh, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's interesting. I, I will tell you like one of my, one of my reactions to it is like I have a friend on, uh, on social media and she's constantly posting about like how she's beating depression and like I can't even describe like the vitriol and the anger that I feel when I see that and like it's totally not justified whatsoever but it's like like what the fuck are you doing like th this is my this is my response to it in my head I'm like what the fuck are you doing like just suck it the fuck up and be miserable like the rest of us like that's not a realistic response but that's kind of where I come from because in, in my mind, in my, my fucked up head, it's like, well, I'm fucking, like, miserable all the time. You don't hear me complaining. So, in, like, some way that that makes me better. But it really doesn't. So, it's just, like, I don't know. It's just, like, one of those things. Because, like, like, I mean, y you try and come up with, with the things to drown it out, to make it, like, noise. Like, you, you want to get better at something like cycling or programming or yeah. whatever fuck and like it's just it, it doesn't do anything you still end up to like four in the morning just laying there like getting into some dark shit like <laughs> and it's uh it's it's weird man it's really weird like i've uh like i've probably spent like the last 20 nights just like staying up for four hours not getting any sleep just like coming up with reasons not to end it. And it's like, it's, it's weird and it's, it's not good. And I, I honestly don't know what to do at this point. And I'm just kind of like looking at a glad box right now. Just like, it's like going off on a, on a, like a, like a diatribe, like a rant. <laughs> Cause I don't know any other way to do this. So yeah. Yeah. That's what I find sucks about it is like, I don't know, for me it's always just been like a kind of waiting it out thing. You know, living through that sucks and I guess people have you know, different ways to deal with it. Um, I definitely would not do mine by posting on social media all the time about it. It's like the last thing I would want to do like when depressed. But at the same time, I think it's brave of her to do that because like, like, I mean, you can look at it as whining mm. or you can look at it as trying to own it. Like, just because you don't tell people or you don't ask for help doesn't mean that you're strong. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're better. And like, that's something I've kind of like convinced myself into thinking. And I've just over the past like month or two just realized that like, I think I'm full of shit. Um... So yeah, I mean, am I gonna start posting like that? Probably not. Because I'm a little too like embarrassed about it all, I guess.
but I mean, on the plus side, only 12 people watch this channel, so I'm just kind of, I'm ranting towards no one right now, <laughs> which is, which is nice, and I don't mean you're not no one, you're actually super fucking important to me, and like, like, we may not even respond to, like, last video got no comments, and that really sucked, because like, I didn't get a chance to read, like, your opinions on things, like, that's fine, because I, I do that with content that I like too, I like it, and I, I don't comment, because I don't think there's anything I have to contribute. But uh, I, I really do enjoy reading the comments quite a bit, actually. Um, even if I don't respond, or even if I don't know what to say. Um, I, I like it a lot. But anyway, um, yeah, man. It's just, uh, it is what it is. What are your thoughts on uh, medication for health? I mean, I've thought about it. Like, I, uh, I went to my doctor when uh, I started because yeah, let's just get into all this. So like, I, uh, um, so like I found my girlfriend dead like four years ago and it was really fucked up. And it, uh, it definitely set me down like a, like a really bad, really bad path. And shit got really weird. And um, yeah, so, so it was not good. And anyway, I went to my doctor cause I was like having panic attacks. And I guess I was all kind of fucked up. And he sent me to a therapist, and I went to him for probably, like, five months or something. Um, but, like, I started dating Katie not too long after the whole, uh, the whole thing went down. Like, happened pretty much beginning of July, and then started going out with Katie really on... I mean, we didn't really start until, like, uh, like November, but it was pretty much on your birthday. Like, that's when things really started. Um... And, uh, it was definitely, like, a good distraction. But, like, there's still so much other stuff, I guess. And, uh, you kind of just never... You never come back from something like that, really. And it definitely changes you into a, uh, into a different person. And, uh, apparently, for me, a much more sad person. And a much, like, and I don't like how... Um, oh, speak about uh, medication for depression. He offered it, and I said no. But anyway, uh, and I don't like how like angry I am all the time. And like, you may not see it because like I don't, I don't try and show it. But I fucking hate everyone. Like I, I do. And it's just like I don't, I don't like how I, I wish, like I didn't feel that way. But like, I don't know, man. Like I, there's like two people that I like, and it's just. I feel like I'm like a grumpy old man at the age of like of 24 and that's and it's not like a like crotchety for the sake of being crotchety it's just like I'm just fucking pissed off all the time and it's like like I don't think there's any coming back from that like I remember at the funeral uh, of Olivia and like this this old guy said to me and like it kind of stuck with me he's like you can get bitter or you can get better and like I think I've convinced myself into thinking that I got better because like I I do so much more shit and I put myself out there more but like I'm fucking miserable and I'm just like this like angry old man who doesn't want to be around anyone but I just do it to like make people think I'm okay so I don't know I mean like I guess like I, I, I made it look like I was better but like I'm bitter as fuck and like it's it's something that I don't know how to switch otherwise and like like the four months of therapy did jack shit so I just kind of I don't know, I don't know what to do other than that, I guess. You just kind of, I don't know, man, you just kind of keep, keep going, I guess. But, like, why? Like, if, if you're just going to distract yourself with the little things and the things that are going to lead to happiness that you're never going to get to, like, what's the fucking point? I think the distracting part is kind of problematic it's like I said like at least this has been my experience is um you have to like kind of get used to those emotions so that they they're so much less um it's been four probably. years man <laughs> yeah I know but I, know, I find you you're very much like distracting yourself away from them um and but how are you beating it you're not you're not solving anything you're not fixing the problem like putting a band-aid on a broken arm. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. sure, but I'm suggesting kind of like actually 
wallowing in it a little bit. Like, obviously, I'm kind of like a healthy mindset and, you know, trying to kind of make sure you just know what it is you're dealing with because, you know, in the end, it's kind of a bunch of hormones that are going to swing your brain one way and you're trying to get those hormone levels either down or to your brain to respond less to. And I think distracting yourself is actually not good because then you're just making your brain not care about those. And then, you know, when you go to bed at night, then suddenly your brain doesn't have anything to do other than to care about those. But it's like, how much longer do I have to fucking, like, deal with it? Like, it's like, like, I spent, like, four months in the thick of it, like, talking to people and shit. Like, it's like, how much... How much longer do I have to spend? Like, it's like, I fuck, I did my time, I thought, at least, like, I guess not. But it's not even, it's not even the Olivia thing, like, I feel, I feel like that just made me a different person. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, the, the constant self-loathing and just the, the mindset that's now been, like, ingrained in me that I can't fucking get rid of. And it's, uh, it's negative as shit. And, like, I, I don't know what to do about it other than just, like, act like a more positive person and, like, say, yeah, totally radical and all that stuff. And, like, just kind of be this dumbed-down skater bro or whatever. Um, I don't know. Is it, that why you're looking for kind of a big change? So if you that you'll change your mindset again? Um, I mean, it'll definitely help. The, the change is, is for my sanity, for sure. I mean, like, I, I don't want to, you know what I mean? There's, there, there's such a mindset here of like, well, I'm just going to move out of my parents' house. I'm going to get a house, I don't know, a quarter of a kilometer down the street. And I'm going to have a wife there, lots of kids, and I'm going to fucking die. And that's <laughs> like, and that sounds ridiculous, but literally probably 80% of the people I went to school with are following that exact plan. Yeah. That exact trajectory. Yep. It's just, that's, that's a big part of the mindset here. You, uh, you move out of your parents' place, you, you go to school, you get your job, you build a house right next to theirs and you fucking die there. And that's just, and then you hope your kids do the same. And that's kind of like, that's the weird mindset here, uh, which I'd like to get away from. And I'd like to just, you know, go somewhere else. And, uh, oh shit, we never even talked about that on the channel, did we? Yo, so, um, it looks like probably moving to Australia in May. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of things to kind of work there's out. There's a lot of variables. Mainly like, because, uh, uh, me at the very least, trying to do it in kind of a more permanent sense. And yeah. moving somewhere as permanently is it's way, way stuff. different than going somewhere as for like a year <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Um, or at least like with no kind of tied down plans yeah for me like i am kind of it is more tied down plans um and yeah that makes things very very difficult but yeah no um, totally and like i i'd like it if you'd go too but like even at this point i feel like if you didn't go i would still go maybe maybe not but like like, good for you yeah it'd be a lot harder it'd be easier if like my buddy went with me and like my roommate and everything like that would that'd make life easy Plus, then we can make this fantastic show for thousands of viewers. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. It'd be, good. it'd be good. I don't know if it would make a change or a difference in anything. But as long as, like, I'm convinced into thinking something, then I guess... I don't know. I think... I don't think you can do it without having some sort of mindset change. And, like, I don't know. TV's described it to me as, you know, having to uh, relearn a lot of things. Like, normally you wouldn't even think about having to relearn, and, uh, or things that you already know very well, like, kind of having to relearn, like, she was, like, I was saying, like, um, you know, if I moved to Australia, I wouldn't want to live with a bunch of people, um, which means, like, I have to put up with some kind of expensive rent, is kind of how we were talking about that, and, um, she was saying, it's like, well, when you come move here, like, you know, it might be, might be different. You're probably going to have to relearn that because, you know, living on your own or with another person um, in Australia is going to be very different than living on your own here because, like, when I'm on my own here, I'm not really on my own uh, because my mom's, just down the mom's street, five much, minutes away or whatever, yeah. you know? And it's, it's that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of 
a lot of things you have to relearn. I think it's just it's no way to like do that without you know being different on the other side. Yeah, I mean, maybe it definitely it, it challenges everything you know, which I think is good. Yeah, I think it's why uh, traveling makes people more interesting. It's because it it kind of it humbles you to the fact of like I really don't know that much like I, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean whereas when you live on a, a small province or a small country or whatever you kind of get this sense of like you have so much knowledge and so much experience when you really you don't yeah. and it's just that false that false sense of that. I mean it, it definitely comes back to a uh, Socrates line that like I kind of I, I like to live my life by and I don't think it, it results in a happier life but it definitely results in a more full one, which is the unexamined life is worth living. And to me, that comes down to like, if you're not, if you're not analyzing why you do and what you do things and like the why of it all, then you should just fucking kill yourself. Which is like, and I mean, I'm not telling anyone to do that. That's obviously not what I'm getting at. But from like my standpoint, like I would rather die than not not examine what's going on around me and like fundamentally try and understand why I think the way I do and like my certain motivations. Cause like, and maybe that's part of the reason why I have such a negative mindset because like when I do something positive, I'm willing to accept and I know that it is for selfish means. Like I do good things because it makes me feel good because it makes me feel like I'm a good person, which I mean, talking to so many other people, it's like, it's like a lot of, or I haven't talked to anyone who's had that same mindset as me so far. And it's just, I find that interesting. It's like, how do you not see that? That's so obvious within yourself that like, you're not a good, you're not a good fucking person. Like, don't, don't convince yourself into believing that. Like, that's, that's such a load of bullshit. You're, you're doing this because it makes you feel good. That's, that's not altruistic. It's you're like altruism doesn't exist. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah. It's it's all this self-motivating bullshit. Like I think you're discarding empathy a little too much. Absolutely if you see somebody not. smile, it's going to make you smile. Yeah, because like, it makes you feel good. There's always some part of that. Um, if, you feel, if, you, like, if you see someone doing bad, you're going to feel bad. And you'll feel happy because you're feeling bad. Like you'll be like, I'm doing the correct response right now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. And I don't know, it's like, I don't know, that, that's kind of my approach on it, but maybe like, it's not the best approach to have, because then you'll end up like me, <laughs> someone who acts like they're happy when they're really not. So it's, yeah, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of my approach to it all. So, you know, if you'd rather have the unexamined life, then go for it, because ignorance is certainly bliss. And this definitely isn't.